Ah, thanks, Anthony. Thanks very much for the uh, for the for the intro. Um, for, for those who of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Peter Wells. Uh, I'm here today from Lutra Consulting uh, to chat to you about um, a mobile app called Input and how that can be used with uh, QGIS to do field survey. Uh, give me one second. Let's try to work out how to move some of those controls out of the way in Zoom. Okay, I think that's good. Brilliant. So yes, uh, Input is, as I mentioned, a, a mobile app uh, based on QGIS. So it shares many things in common with QGIS, in, including how maps are rendered, how things look and feel, and all the rest of it. But the user interface is, is very different, as you'll see in a moment. Um, it allows you to easily uh, capture geodata in the field. Uh, using a tablet or mobile, even a, a mobile phone with a small screen makes these things quite easy. And it's available for iOS and also Android. So um, I'll show you more about that in a moment. Um, input, uh, the, the app links to something called Mergin, uh, which is our cloud-based uh, data synchronization service. And we'll, we'll use that today in the demonstration uh, that I'll show you. So let me just move over to, to QGIS. Um, give me a second. Okay. So yeah, here we have a small QGIS project and I'm looking here at the previous Phosphor-G UK locations. So we've had uh, Phosphor-G in Southampton, in London, Nottingham, and in Edinburgh so far in the UK. But what about today? Uh, we have participants spread everywhere, all over the place. I uh, thought it would be interesting to perhaps go about mapping them uh, to see where, where people are located. And one way we could do this is through the input uh, app. And, and let's assume uh, everyone is uh, wanting to be a surveyor. Uh, we can set up a QGIS project uh, to share with people and that'll allow them to then start to do things like digitize points and maybe even capture feedback about the, uh, the conference. Um, the basis of that survey, I'm going to use this simple uh, QGIS project. So you, as you can see, it's got some background maps and existing layer. And this uh, layer just here, Phosphor UK online locations, is going to be the basis for my, for my survey data. Uh, let's have a look at that, just mainly the attribute table uh, to see what's there. So as you can see, I've got fields for a photo or a path to a photo, dates for when things were surveyed, notes, things like were people's expectations met? Did you like the sessions? Was the duration too long, too short, or just right, et cetera, et cetera. So a bunch of different feedback questions there. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Sorry, just flicking through some paper notes here. Yeah, right. So to start off with, I, I want to get this project uh, to my surveyors. Uh, and I'm going to do that by, um, or, or to my mobile, let's say. I'm going to do that in this case by sharing it via the Mergin Sync service. So with a, with a project already in place, I can select here, Create New Project. I'm going to call this uh, Cross 4G UK 2020. And that'll be a private project for the moment to allow people I share it with to edit it and survey things. And rather than a blank project, in this case, I'm going to initialize from this project that you're already looking at. So I just find the folder where that's all located, just here, Fossil DK Online 2020. And if I click OK, that should all be pushed online. OK, so that's successfully created a, a new project, um, which I can now share with my surveyors. So again, this is looking at merging uh, online, uh, just my, my projects that I've got here. If I just refresh that, okay, there's Phosphor to UK 2020. And at the moment, we can just see some files listed in there, the QGIS project, uh, some style I'm going to use later, and, and the data, which is sitting in a geo package. So uh, within the sharing settings, uh, I can just add my, my colleagues here, for example. I'll add Saba there um, as another person who can view that project. I'm also going to set him as owner and writable as well so that he can administer it too. So that's done. Um, now let's take a look at input and see what that uh, looks like. So th this is a, a screencast 
uh, an HTTP screencast of my uh, Android uh, phone at the moment that I'm using. I'm going to use the mouse also to show you where I'm pressing on the screen. Otherwise, it's a bit confusing. So if I just open input and towards the bottom, uh, it says that my projects uh, select there and you can see that's the, the project that was set up and I can just press on that uh, little download button there. So that's now pulled the project to my phone. Uh, here we can see a little home option. This shows projects local to the device that I'm looking on. This is, this is one way of syncing things. I could have also used a, a cable to push the project to the phone, but that's obviously more difficult if you've got a whole bunch of surveyors and you're not physically together. This is a, an effective way of sharing things. So if I now open that project, we can uh, see what that looks like. Okay, so if I zoom out a bit, probably should have done that first. Okay, there we go. So this is, this is the same project we were just looking at in QGIS with the same uh, layers, et cetera. And you can see obviously my, my location uh, on the map. Uh, if I just press the GPS button at the bottom, that will uh, zoom into uh, where I currently am or center the map, sorry. And I can then use the record button at the bottom to add uh, or edit data in any of the layers that have been synchronized. Uh, just here, you can see uh, the layer that's currently selected for editing. It's Phos4G UK Online Locations. If I just press there, uh, you get a list of the other uh, vector layers in the project as well. So at the moment, that's not so great because I don't want to give the people, uh, the surveyors, ability to edit this particular layer of the previous venues. So we'll, we'll fix that later, but for the time being, that's the active layer. And if I just press add point uh, at, the, at the bottom there, uh, this then allows me to add a, add a point in, in, a, in a given location. Um, sorry, just click record, that's right. Um, for the moment, that's just where my location is. If I press GPS, the GPS button at the bottom, otherwise I can pan the uh, map around the place to precisely uh, position uh, a pin exactly uh, where I want it there before uh, pressing uh, add add point okay yeah brilliant so the form that you see uh, for the moment is quite basic um, it's just the standard line edit widgets doesn't really make much sense for a photo to have to type the the path by hand again with the date and all of these uh, these other options uh, there that you see, so not not particularly user friendly uh, at the moment. So we can we can adapt that in QGIS in a moment by changing the uh, the form style. So let's go back. And first of all, I'm going to push these changes. Uh, I think I took just took a uh, survey point. I'm just going to add a, a couple more. One just there as well, and save. And maybe just one more over here. Oops, ah, sorry, getting ahead of myself there, save. Cool, so there's a couple of survey points added. And if I now go back to projects, bottom left, and my projects, now this uh, project has a synchronization, like a sync uh, icon next to it. So if I just press that, that'll push my changes up to uh, merging. Now if I come back into QGIS here, uh, as you can see, there's no, no points in this area yet. But if I expand uh, this here in the browser in the bottom left and select synchronize on that project, I should then fetch my latest changes, which now you can see the, the points I've just surveyed there on the mobile device. Um, second, check on the time. Okay. So let's make the survey uh, a bit more user friendly by changing some of the, the settings here in QGIS for the, the forms. So you're probably already familiar with, with the fact that you can change the edit widgets, the various fields here. So for example, for the photo layer, uh, I can change that to an attachment type and a few other bits and pieces as well with, uh, let's see. So relative path, yeah, relative project. There's an internal document viewer as well. We can specify to display that image nicely when we ID that. And we can also alias things, uh, photo, there we go. So I could go through and change all of those settings. They're nice, uh, different types of widget, more appropriate for the type of data. Uh, as that takes a bit of time, I'm gonna just load that from a style file, which I have already prepared. Mm -hmm. There we go. 
as well. So now you can see it's using the drag and drop uh, designer instead of auto generate. And there's gonna be three tabs containing all those uh, elements, uh, with things like your experience being a one to 10 slider, uh, duration as a drop down, all of that kind of jazz. So if I just click okay there. Another thing I wanna be able to do is restrict editing uh, to only this survey layer. And I don't want people to be able to change the previous Hospital UK venues. So if I go project properties, within the data sources section there, I can set one of those to read only. This one, just gonna make that read only. And okay, just gonna save my project in QGIS. And again, synchronize that. That's gonna push that back up to the cloud-based storage. And if I now go back here onto my phone, I'm just gonna sync this uh, project. Uh, give me a second and reopen that here. Okay, so now when we come to record by pressing the record button in the bottom there, hmm, interesting, GPS not available for some reason, I don't know why, that's odd. Anyway, um, ah, there we go, probably didn't have a lock. Uh, now you see here in the bottom with the layer selection, uh, there's only one editable layer, so I have control over that now. And if I select add a point, I now have a much more tidy user interface uh, here with even the ability to take a photo there. Uh, there you go, so terrible selfie for you guys with me. Uh, that, if I just press check, that should be stored in the project. That's set automatically based on a default value. And again, in the other tabs here, uh, we've got various different sliders uh, that we can use uh, to, to quickly edit these settings. And oops, let's look on the screen. Here we have a drop down menu for, for these uh, and these kind of check boxes, as well as um, other text, uh, which even works nicely with the uh, Android um, text to speech keyboard and things like this for easy field surveying. Great. So if I just save that again in the bottom there. And I'm just going to go back to projects and synchronize that again here. Might take a fraction longer as it's pushing a photo up there as well. And coming back into QGIS again, syncing. Mm -hmm. And I think one of these should now have an integrated photo as well. Oops, wrong way. Yeah, there you go. So you can see the integrated document viewer working well there too, and the same. Uh, forms layout so that, that we configured on the mobile uh, than in uh, QGIS as well. Time. Okay, so uh, the other thing I wanted to quickly show with the, the project, you may have noticed another background layer here. If I just zoom out, uh, we have also OS Zoom Stack, um, but that's loaded via a Vector Tiles uh, layer, which is a new provider in QGIS be available from Spidey. My colleague had a presentation on this this morning, so any kind of detailed questions about it, you can ask him, but in summary, it's just basically a, a vector tiles layer. And I wanna give the users of the survey app uh, a choice of, of uh, layers, because at the moment, we, we, we haven't seen how we can change the different layers seen in, in the app. The way that uh, input does this is through, uh, oops, sorry, through themes in QGIS. So if I just create uh, two themes, so I'll add one here called, oops, this one back up first. Create theme, so this is uh, open street map. Okay, and I'll just set the layers differently there for a theme called Zoom Stack. Brilliant, so there are my two themes. So let's change that back for the moment. Again, project save. Synchronize that again. Okay. Brilliant. And just go back to the mobile application. Cool. So I've, I've synchronized that uh, project now, and towards the bottom right of the, the screen in the more uh, settings, you should be able to see their map themes. If I select that, I've, I've now got choice of uh, the two themes which I've configured 
uh, in, in QGIS, which I can use then to, to change the, the different layers. So the layer control is not fine grained, but it's pretty easy uh, to use. And that was the idea to try and keep things as, as kind of simple as possible. And again, with the vector tiles, you can see the added benefit of that. So if I zoom in really, really far here, there's no pixelation. This is drawing these from uh, a vector source. So it's like super, super crisp background mapping uh, as well. I think this particular one's set up for, for the entire UK. And as you can see, this is, okay, it's over broadband Wi-Fi on a mobile, but still the, the speed is, is quite acceptable for, uh, for a set of background maps like of that, that size. Okay. About five right. minutes, Pete. Yep, sure. Five minutes of uh, presentation. Less yeah. Questions. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So um, let's see what to cover next. View model pieces, if I just zoom in here. I'm going to review one of these points that I've already surveyed uh, by pressing that uh, edit button there. And it's going to change maybe one of these. Um, yeah. Mm, I prefer, yeah, okay, I changed this one. I'll participate in future online UK, possibly UK events. Set that to true. I'm just going to save and synchronize that because uh, I want to show you how you can uh, see the different versions of the project that are merging. So that project's synced there. And if I just go back here to merging here and look at my project. Uh, so these, this is the list of files in the project. I'm just going to hit refresh on that page. So you can see there's also now a couple of photos uh, have been added there that those, those came from the mobile device. Uh, a bit more about this. So I can edit my project also here from the web interface by just dragging and dropping additional files through the web browser. Um, more, more interestingly, I can also track the changes of the project. So if I look here, uh, this is just when I uploaded or created the project the first time. And we can see that there are three files added. So for each version, you can see what changed uh, in each of these. And in the final one, V8, yeah, so that's a change to the geo package. That's not particularly helpful. It doesn't say what I changed in there, which layer. But if I click show advanced, then it specifies now which layer changed, whether it's an insert, an update, or delete, which column, and from, from which to what value. Uh, so you can see here that that was my, my checkbox change. Uh, and also it should be possible to revert back to a uh, different iteration, similar to the way that source code control is working. Ooh, Saba has been uh, editing the project as well while we've uh, been online at the same time here. Okay. Um, you've also got options to do things like clone the project. So if someone makes a nice template, you can clone that and then go off and, and do whatever you want with it. Transfer the project to others, uh, delete project, sharing settings, all the rest of it uh, with that too. So just a bit of a kind of a crash a crash intro to uh, emerging. Let's see how I'm doing on time. Okay, so I think that's pretty much uh, where I wanted to get to today in terms of my my demo uh, there with the with the synchronization um, between QGIS there and input. Um, as you can see, there are a number of points there. Perhaps some others. Oh, there's something down here as well. That's probably Saba. Let me just open that in case there's some kind of weird photo there. Okay. Interesting, the background map it also allows you to identify that. Okay. Ah, there you go, there's Sava as well. It's obviously listening in with the presentation too. So I think that probably brings me up to about the time mark. So um, yeah, happy to hear any questions, feedback and anything else. And thanks very much for the opportunity to uh, present here today. Okay, that's, uh, that's perfect timing, Pete, and thanks for uh, uh, Unless I missed anything, a very slick demo as well. Oh, um, thank you. So uh, I've got a bunch of questions, so I'm just going to launch straight into those. Um, we've got about eight or ten, so I'll make them quick fire ones. Um, so mm -hmm. first of all, Hugo says, is there a way to record GPS positions and timing data synchronously to afterwards play around with time controllers, which are coming in the um, uh, upcoming GI QGIS releases? So, you know, the time the time mm. element of this. So position and time at the same time. Interesting. I'm not sure. I know the application supports uh, digitizing uh, lines using the GPS and you can use it to record a track of where you've been. I'm not sure at this stage whether or not the time element for each of those vertices is captured though. 
Um, maybe if Saba's here, he can comment uh, more on that, or if he can just PM me perhaps on my mobile to answer. But I think for tracks, fine. The time element, I'm not sure that that's mapped to every vertex yet. Okay, uh, thanks. So the next one, um, it's actually three questions from Ross, which is a bit cheeky, but we'll see if we can okay. let it get away with it. Um, so are project layers extracted from multiple sources and saved in the geopackage file? in the data.geopackage file. So I think he means, you know, are all the layers packaged in that single geopackage? In this instance, yes. Um, in QGIS, each of those two layers is referring to the same geopackage. So they're just different layers within the same geopackage. Um, but uh, these could be, yeah, post-GIS layers. They can be geopackage. Um, Shapefile, I'm not so sure about. We, we opted for geopackage because it seems to be the, the way forward now for vector layers. But it doesn't have to be in a in a geo package file uh, to to get this to work with with input. Yeah, shape file works too. So I was saying you can probably see that on the bottom right of my screen there. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. That's yeah. a good good way of getting some yeah. input. Um, yeah. So the next question is about keeping the data. So keeping that geo package in, uh, in sync with a master copy sync sitting in postures, but it, it sounds as though that geo package is the master copy effectively. Um, I think soon we will have support for synchronization with PostGIS as well. That's something that's, that's being worked on currently. Uh, Saba, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, that should allow you to then syn um, yeah, synchronize between a, a master PostGIS database and then use GeoPackage in, in uh, input for the surveying and then be able to pull it back again. Um, at, at the moment, um, within the, the, the synchronization platform, uh, one of the benefits of using GeoPackage is that of, of the version control uh, that you saw here, uh, where was it, in the history. So you can have m multiple editors make changes to multiple uh, uh, layers and, and different features in it, whatever, and it will intelligently merge those changes together uh, without the, the files getting messed up, which can happen sometimes if, if they're not managed uh, properly. Okay, thanks. Um, so the next question, can input forms handle related layers? For example, a park polygon can have multiple trees within it and a tree can have multiple surveys. So is there this relations, I suppose, with it between layers? Um, I believe so, yes. Um, in, in most cases, uh, the, the functionality between uh, QGIS and, and input should be uh, quite relatable. Um, maybe Saba might be best placed to, to answer that one, actually. Maybe we can unmute him. Um, well, he's, while we're thinking about that, yeah. I'm going to move on to the next question, which is whether the app supports cascade, um, Lorena, uh, does the app support cascading forms for narrowing down options in a series of drop down lists, so hierarchical um, I'm hierarchical not sure, forms? not sure uh, personally offhand whether that is the case. No, that's not supported yet. Excellent. Drill okay. down and Thank the cascade you, are not. Um, okay, so uh, the next question from John: Can a recording point be synced from, uh, which is synced from the phone, be edited on the phone again, if errors are noticed? So, yes. you know, can you update if you've if you've done something wrong, update it again from the phone? Uh, yes. And resubmit. That should be possible to edit a points geometry, if that's right. Let's say this one over here that I wanted it to be within the road. Should be able to do edit geometry. Ah, there we go. So let's say I want to move it into the middle of the road. Add point, save. Yeah, so that's now been moved into the into the road. Yeah. Lovely, thank you. Uh, next one from Reg. Um, can you cache maps on the app for use where you haven't got any uh, Wi-Fi or data? Uh, yes, I believe so. Um, in, in, in the case that we're using here, we are using web-based maps, um, but uh, if you were to, uh, for example, use some of the, what was the format called, Saba, for? Um, vector tiles, uh, yeah, MB vector tiles, yeah. MB something, there's an offline MB format tiles. for vector tiles, yeah, it's like a SQLite file or similar, which you, you could certainly then uh, use instead for the background. And, and I, I don't think the file size would even be too massive if you use vector tiles either. I think the file size is a lot better than using raster. For whole Great Britain, uh, for vector tiles, zoom stack is uh, only a couple of gigabyte. Yeah, with a decent phone memory, that would be quite doable. 
Great. So, okay, so next one from David. It's uh, short and sharp. He says, tutorials and documentation, question mark. Uh, I believe there is tutorials and documentation. Um, on our blog posts and also some on GitHub documentation. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, at the moment, mainly on, on GitHub and blogs, but there's a, an intro document um, which also specifies how to do the project preparation, which is the document bits I found the most useful, uh, background layers and mainly layer properties and how to set up the different fields and deal with images and image previews. Um, so the setup's fairly basic uh, once, you, once you know how, but things like this, like previewing that image there rather than needing to actually open the, the point there in input. Yeah. Fantastic, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, so next one from Jamie, who says, uh, after the user has created a point, is there a way to uh, guide somebody back to that point in on the ground in a non-urban setting? So just by way of context, context, he says, I'm looking at using this in a wilderness setting to reroute hiking trails. To be able so to sort of navigate. go to yeah. go to function, I guess. Mm, I don't think out of, out of the box in that case. So certainly you'd be able to see um, uh, your location on, on the on the map here versus whatever it is you're trying to find to, to see contextually where you are and what direction you're pointing. But I don't think uh, at the moment there would be something like a wayfinder, waypoint finder, which I think is what, what you're perhaps talking about. Okay. That's fine. Uh, next one from Shailesh. Uh, it's about polygon editing. It says, is it possible to split a polygon in input? I will leave that question to Saba. I'm not sure about mm. that. No, we kept the interface very simple and those kind of advanced feature, we left it in QGIS to be used. I think if you did want to split a poly polygon and you were in the field, the way I would probably tackle that would be to capture a um, uh, a line perhaps that you intended to split it by, save that, and then I'd sync with the desktop when back in the office and I'd use that line as the basis of splitting the polygon uh, rather than doing that on site, I think. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and the last question I've got here is from Chris, it's coming back to the post just support, um, just asking if there's a time scale on that at all. The draft version will be at some point early July. If you monitor uh, our GitHub repo, you will see the update on GeoDiff. Fantastic. Good. Um, well, that's the end of the questions. I don't know if there's, uh, we have got a little bit more time. If there's anything either of you guys want to add? Um, not from my side, Saba, any, anything else you want to add? Um, no, we are working on also um, integration with our um, uh, web publishing platform. So soon you'll be able to directly push your survey uh, to uh, map in our web, web platform. So from device to web, it should be just a matter of pushing a button. Fantastic. Great. Well, thanks very much, both of you. Uh, from my point of view, you know, it's really nice to see the boundaries of huge just being pushed in, in all sorts of directions. It, it, you know, it, it really makes a difference to, you know, to be able to have it integrated with these kind of field applications. Uh, I know there are other, there are other options for this, but this is looking, this is looking pretty good. So thanks very much indeed for, for a great presentation and, um,